Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my review of Tower of Gods uh, chapter 311 or season 2 chapter uh, or season 2 episode 231 and uh, I'm going to be doing some different stuff with my reviews trying to be more in depth about the actual uh, what things mean for the story and actual thoughts on things and callbacks and stuff like that and a bit less about doing everything part by part. Um, I don't know, I'm just going to be trying some different things here and there. So I have a lot of notes for this one because we had a lot of things going on this chapter. And also sorry if today my voice sounds off in any of my videos. I think I'm losing my voice because it, it just doesn't sound right to me right now. So uh, let's go ahead and start going through this review. Starting off, we have Kuhn's understanding of Bomb and Rachel's relationship that I think is really interesting because we're going to likely see a lot more um, a lot more of why Kuhn feels this way whenever we do get to uh, SIU's mentioned future arc of Kuhn uh, potentially uh, it being explained a bit better why he feels this way about Bomb because we have some serious issues in his past if uh, this is the way he feels and even Evan acknowledges that He's like, um, you know, climbing the tower with an irregular that's very rare and very special and unique for a regular. So um, it seems as though that's not really why Kuhn does it. It's more that he personally has a connection with Bomb that he feels is a bit more than that. Also, he does say the um, shark can't swim with minnows forever line. And I was like, you know, I feel like I had heard that somewhere in the past. And looking back, I thought maybe it was Lee Ro Ro or Yu Han Sung. But um, Quant said something similar. He said no matter how small a shark is, it can't swim. Or, yeah, no matter how, how small a baby shark is, it can't swim with the sardines. So it's cool to note that CU or SIU has um, used that that sort of similar analogy in the past with Bomb's power compared to the power of ordinary regulars. So then the Guardian God shows an example of the Shinsu Black Hole Sphere, or a more proper translation, the Divine Circular Flow uh, to Bomb. Now I also, in the blog, I'm not really going to discuss anything from there, it was mostly just personal stuff about SIU uh, talking about writing the chapter and everything, nothing really uh, pertaining to the actual story, except that it was also translated there as divine, or, yeah, as divine Circular Flow. So I personally think Divine Circular Flow is a better translation anyway, so I prefer that because Black, Black Hole Sphere sounds way too similar to me to what um, Karaka does. So I prefer the translation Divine Circular Flow, so that's likely what I'll be referring to it as. Now the God of Grodians does say that he can only use this on the train, uh, so it is a very, very special move. And it actually, the way it works is that it sucks all the Shinsu around into a single point and then releases it back outwards, uh, creating a pretty powerful blast that he says, and I quote, is world destroying. Now I certainly freaking hope not, because that's a huge, huge problem with a lot of series that actually kind of ruins a lot of shonen type series where a, a character moves to the stage of being world destroying and it is just so outside of the realm of, I don't know, a fair fight anymore that it becomes just really lame and this sort of main character god complex is not enjoyable anymore once a character becomes too powerful to where nothing is a feasible threat anymore. So I honestly really hope that that's a massive exaggeration. Um, so uh, yeah, raising that scale ruins a lot of series, and I don't want to see Tower of God be uh, dragged down too hard by that. So uh, in just in general, a lot of people brought it up in the comments that there were too many power-ups, and I have said time and time again with Tower of God that that's something with the Hell Train that I do disagree with the writing. Like, as much as I love Tower of God, I think we are getting way too many power-ups. Before we can even see Bomb fully use powers he's learned, we're getting another power or power-up thrown on him, and it's more power-ups usually rather than training, which training is okay, gaining this power over time that we see through combat. But actually just being given a new power is just, it is 
not a cool way to do character development. It's not a very good way for it. Um, like, just throwing some examples out there, before we even got to see all of what he really learned from um, Yu Han Sung and uh, Ha Jin Sung, we moved on and he got the thorn. And then it's like, oh, that's really cool. And what they were doing right after Revolution Road, when they were uh, going through those floors to get to the Hell Train and Bomb was struggling with the voice in his head and the thorn, that was really interesting. Because the thorn was a power-up that a lot of people, including myself, were worried about. But it was being handled slowly and well. And I think if we kept on that road, it would have been really good. But it's just this odd thing where Siu decided that on top of the thorn, before we even got to see the true nature of the thorn, then we have the random soul power thrust upon him, the rice pot training thrust upon him. Um, now we're having this new ability thrust upon him before we even really get to see the full extent of what the previous power-ups even did. So that is one huge glaring problem with the writing of Tower of God, where I love the series, but we have a serious, serious problem with power-ups right now. It's very, uh, it, it's the biggest threat to the series being good, is too many power-ups. So, um, Bomb wants to be hit by the attack in order to learn it, even though he just learned it was world-destroying, which is why I am hoping world-destroying is a massive, massive exaggeration, or maybe even a mistranslation. There were a lot of, uh, misspellings and stuff in this week's line translation, so I mean, hey, maybe. Uh, then we actually see Misang and Wangnan again. Now, I loved, one of my favorite things about this chapter was Misang's character development. I love that because she's been with the main group for quite a long time now, but hasn't got a ton of development, so it was good to see a little coming into play here. Um, I like that, and Wangnan explains to her that he agreed to climb the tower in order to save her and Horyang, and tells her to just leave and forget about him and stuff, which obviously she isn't going to do because like she said in a flashback later on she has been through all of this with them she's going to continue climbing the tower but before we even get to that we have a uh, little three days later sort of montage that i thought was really uh, funny i enjoyed it um we see them leaving the 40th floor and it was funny how the uh, regulars down there had the hockey or hockney uh, picket line and um, also, I loved how when we had the montage, we saw the training, which was funny. And the funniest part is when um, Sachi and Boro were fighting those uh, Shinwei or whatever, and we see Hockney in the background painting Barrow Barrow. I thought that was a really cute thing to add in there. Uh, and then, even skipping from that montage three days later, we skip again to two months later, and we're on the 42nd floor, which um, I don't mind these time skips now and again these small time skips. I don't think there's a huge problem with that. Uh, so we're at the 42nd floor. It's called Black Mountain is the station we're at. So Sachi plans to keep any of the uh, people trying to get on the train off because they can't have people just jumping on opposing them now. And then Misang and Kasano show up. So Misang tells them of course to clear out of the way um, so that Kasano can leave and we get that flashback where Misang is like, you know, I still want to climb, I've been through all this with you guys, and that she's prepared to die, she's not a little kid, of course. Um, and I thought it was funny as well, the way she's like, you know, I can take care of myself, I never trusted you anyway. And um, it was funny just poking again at Wang Nin not being able to, um, not being considered very strong. Uh, so she tells Sachi, or... Yeah, she tells Sachi to tell Bomb to look for the Yellow Prince on Emily, which I think is really, really cool, because this means in the future we're going to see Bomb and Wang Nin communicating sort of behind everything that's going on in secret. I think, I think it'll be in secret at least. I don't think that Rachel can use Emily. Not sure that she can use it to uh, monitor every single thing they say like that. So uh, I think it'll be cool to see Bomb and Wang Nin work together behind the scenes like that. Then um, Sachi also chooses not to tell her about Yi Watch, which I think is really interesting because not only would I want to see what Wang Nin and um, Mi Sang feel about apparently losing Yi Wa, I want to know way more than that what Bomb thinks about losing Akraptor and Prince because Bomb cares a lot about his allies and they were two core allies that were with him for years 
So for him to lose both of them and not even be there, I really hope that we don't skim over that. I really hope Bomb has a pretty emotional reaction to learning that he lost the two of them and he wasn't even there. I uh, I think that having Bomb have have not a strong enough reaction to that wouldn't be very good because it wouldn't really fit Bomb's character as much, even though he's lost a lot recently. Um, I still think it would still very much affect him. Now then, once they're outside, Kasano is berserking this regular, still very, very bothered by what Joaquin told him about being a weapon and not thinking for himself, just being sharp. And you can tell that he's struggling with, he had these grand, grand plans of wanting to save the world somehow by doing the exact terrible things that were done to him to other children. So uh, Kasano's plan was really kind of screwed in the head to begin with. But um, he had these grand plans, he's like, so what, I'm just supposed to follow orders, I can't think for myself, I'm just a weapon, maybe this isn't turning out how it should. And we see that Misang did tell him, you know, if you, we know that you're planning to betray us, there's no way that you're just going to give up Hor Yang's power because Rachel told you to, but if you do, if you do follow us, Wang Nin will grant your wish. Now I think, personally, that Gasano should just take the chance on that. Because uh, it would be bringing his brother back, his little brother Ilmar, or older brother maybe, I don't know how it works. But it would be bringing his brother back, and not only would it be doing that, he has a lot better chance with Wang Nin than with FUG. Because, like she said, FUG is just using him as a weapon. He's not going to have all these grand plans come true if he's with FUG. They're just going to use him and ditch him, he's never going to get what he wants. But with Wang Nin, it's, a, it's kind of a small shot, but it's still a shot. He is far more likely to actually get something accomplished by teaming with Wang Nin and betraying FUG. So uh, it'll be interesting in the future to see what Kasano does because honestly it could go either way in my opinion right now because it does seem like he's bothered with staying with FUG meaning that he's just going to have to follow orders all the time. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what he does. Of course he could choose neither and break off on his own. But uh, even then, if he breaks off on his own without FUG's influence or the chance he's taking with Wang Nin and Bomb, then uh, he'd be screwed either way. So um, beyond that, Joaquin is pissed about Wang Nin joining them, pretty rightfully so, because it does seem like this may even be a part, a part on Rachel's side to try to uh, keep Joaquin in check as well. The way they're both trying to keep each other in check, I've already talked about it being a really cool plot point. So Wang Nin joining him to the conversation, like, we see that Joaquin's sort of trying to figure him out, see what his angle is, and that's, again, one of the things I love most about this chapter. It's cool to see those three climbing the tower together, and yet Wang Nin, Rachel, Joaquin, none of them trust each other, none of them like each other. They're using each other in climbing the tower but they're all planning against each other. So I just think it's cool to see them planning against each other while climbing with each other. And then at the very, very end, we see that this bloodied bomb has learned the divine circular flow, which again, too many power-ups, no thank you. Um, so uh, for my thoughts on this chapter all, overall, like I said, I might do a separate discussion video on having too many power-ups because a lot, a lot of you seem to be expressing that same concern um, I loved Misang's character development here. I just, I really like seeing some side character development, but especially with a character that's really needed it, like Misang, who's been with us for so long, and yet hasn't really gotten a lot of attention. So I thought that was very good. Kasano being stuck in a difficult place I also like, because it'll be interesting to see where his character goes from here. He has a lot of uh, really cool options for the story. But I think, like I said, he's best to join Wang Nin. I think that's Kasano's best bet. One of my favorite parts, Rachel, Wang Nin, and Joaquin all traveling together. I just think the dynamic between the three of them is really cool. And I do still want to see Bomb reacting to uh, finding out that he lost Prince and Akraptor. I really hope that he has a uh, pretty intense reaction to that. Because if he doesn't care that much, that's really going to... Ah, man, that, I'm not going to like that if he barely has any reaction to it. Um, and, of course, as always, the art was very, very nice. The art was very good. I feel almost like I don't even need to say that because the art's pretty much always good in Tower of God. But uh, just throwing it out there, I liked all the small stuff we saw, like the um, training with Andrasi and uh, 
just seeing Andrasi and Yuri for a brief panel. The same thing with uh, Sachi, Boro, and everybody fighting the fish while Hockney's in the background painting. Just the little stuff like that adds a lot and makes the characters feel a lot more fleshed out and human. So uh, I like when SIU and any author throws in little things like that for the audience. So overall for this one, I would I would give it 8.5. I believe 8.5 uh, rockfish Shinway things out of 10. 8.5 out of 10 I think is fair because I thought it was a very, very good chapter, but not totally perfect, not compared to some of the great things that we've had. Um, so yeah, those were my overall thoughts this week, and I hope you enjoyed this video. This review wasn't totally as in-depth and detailed as I wanted it to be, but I feel like I'm trying to work on some things and trying to improve it a little bit. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to keep improving once uh, school, once I get back in school, but I don't know. I'm just going to have so little time that I have no clue what I'm going to do. But uh, I'm going to be trying my best for you all. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like if you did like it. Comment down there and tell me what you thought of this week's chapter and what you thought of my thoughts on it. Of course, whatever you comment, we will probably discuss those topics even more uh, even more in the uh, hockey and a of course, like usual. Uh, subscribe for more Tower of God and a bunch more on the channel, and follow on Twitter if you want. I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel, and uh, just other things like the, uh, the waifu videos coming out that I'm working on. Just some of the longer videos, and once I'm finished with those, I plan to do more long, like, top whatever videos, more discussions, things like that, over time when I can find the time to get them done. The other way, I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that, and I'll see you all next time.